in this session let us see how to find direction of induced voltage okay as we discussed previously induced voltages will be there in both generator and motor and the torque will be there in both generator and motor so we have to find out the direction of induced voltage first and after that how to find out the direction of torque okay now out of my like you know 17 years of experience at starting starting i used to say for generator use right hand and for motor use left hand but still somehow like you know students are getting confused so uh, like you know for generator i will use right hand rule for motor i will not use any rule okay so i request you also do the same okay for generator only we are going to use right hand rule fleming's right hand rule okay in fleming's right hand rule right hand rule is meant for generator action In generator action, okay, basically three fingers we are going to use. That is four finger, okay, and middle finger and thumb, four finger. Four finger will indicate the direction of flux, okay. So four finger, see here, this is going to be flux direction of flux okay middle finger i is going to indicate induced voltage direction of induced voltage and thumb will indicate motion of conductor with respect to field <coughs> with respect to field okay so the importance of this with respect to field you are going to uh, we are going to come to know soon okay now do like you know uh, many of the guys feel hey, it is simple thing so anybody can do it no actually i know that most of the members don't actually interpret it properly okay that's why in gate directly two marks question one time they have given directly from here only okay now let us see This is going to be N pole, this is S pole, let us see. Okay, as I told you at starting, like you know, you feel it is easy only, but at the end, I will show you, like you know, in what way you have to interpret this. Now, my flux N pole, S pole, so N to S flux will go, so N to S flux will go, N to S flux will go. Okay, now let me take conductor here, okay, and let me move the conductor in this direction. One thing I have to tell you here though i say left hand rule don't use but people try to use okay but anyway let me know sorry i'll let you know if it is like you know right hand rule meant for generator action in this in a generator in a generator you are going to rotate the generator by connecting it to prime mover so direction of rotation should be known okay and after that direction of flux also should be known and after that you are you are have to found you have to find the direction of induced voltage so in a generator in a generator out of these like you know thumb motion of the conductor you should know and this is four finger will indicate the direction of flux you should know and you are about to find out the middle finger induced voltage you are about to find okay and in applying left hand rule for example if you are trying to apply left hand rule because i cannot stop you i know okay so thumb has to indicate the motion of conductor with respect to field same and four finger will indicate the flux and middle finger will indicate the direction of current okay so in motor case what is the output motor should be rotated because of the field interaction so in motor direction of uh, rotation of conductor is the output okay so in generator middle finger is the output these two you should know and in generator sorry in motor in motor like you know current you have to supply direction of current you have to supply in motor and flux you have to supply in motor and direction of conductor movement of conductor you should find okay so in generator case middle finger is the output and in motor case thumb is the output okay these two remaining th these two things you have to give now it is going to be let me calculate direction of induced voltage induced voltage okay in order to calculate direction of induced voltage induced voltage i'm not saying whether it is generator or motor 
okay generator action will be there in both motor and generator motor action will be there in both generator and motor because torque will be developed in both motor and generator induced voltage also will be developed in the both generator and motor okay now let me supply the thumb thumb is from n to s n to s is the thumb and direction of conductor my what is a thumb is in the direction so four finger flux and direction of conductor here so this is going to be output middle finger so induced voltage is going to be dot okay see flux direction of a conductor direction of conductor and this is going to be induced voltage okay let me take another one okay see n pole S pole this is going to be stator okay let me write rotor rotor and let me take two conductors here okay let me rotate the rotor in this direction in this direction okay so for example n to s flux is there in this direction n to s flux is there in this direction and motion of conductor is in this direction because rotor is getting rotated in this direction so induced voltage should be cross okay now induced voltage should be cross here induced voltage should be dot here in that way voltages will be induced now let me think of this is actually stationary field rotating uh, armature field is on stationary my armature induced voltages are there in the rotor now let me reverse it okay now let me have conductors here okay actually here only means few guys will be confused a bit now let me think of my generator generator action this is rotor okay in this rotor this can be n pole this can be s pole okay let me rotate my rotor in this direction now people start confusing like you know flux should be from n to s outside the magnetic metal inside the magnetic metal from s to n that is the basic of the 10th class actually okay now means my flux direction should i take upward or downward upward or downward okay some guys say like you know upward some guys say downward okay just remember one thing okay you can watch the video multiple times okay no problem but just remember one thing you have to sit in the air gap okay so the uh, keyword here is like you know you have to sit in the air gap keep it in mind so let me sit in the air gap okay so if i sit in the air gap my flux actually from n pole flux has to come out for example here from n pole flux has to come out from n pole flux has to come out so flux is coming in this direction okay so in upward direction and now direction of rotation direction of rotation my field is rotating in this direction direction of rotation my field is rotating in this direction means that my direction of uh, what do you say fear uh, conductor with respect to field should be opposite direction okay now see here my field is rotating in this direction means that equivalently means with respect to field conductor is moving in this direction only you know because if you see what thumb indicates what thumb indicates motion of conductor with respect to field okay so with respect to field we have to consider so flux is going to be in this direction okay in area flux is going to be in this direction and my field is rotating in this direction means that with respect to field conductor is rotating in this direction so motion of the conductor is in this direction motion of the conductor in this direction so my induced voltage should be dot induced voltage should be dot induced voltage should be cross okay now let us see already we know right hand thumb rule what is right hand thumb rule if current is flowing like this flux will be in this direction if current is in this direction flux will be in this direction okay now let us include my right hand thumb rule into fleming's right hand rule this is rotor okay for example let me keep one conductor here let me keep another conductor here 
okay let me keep dot current here let me keep cross current here these are currents here not voltages okay let me have two conductors here on the stator this is going to be stator okay so let me keep two conductors on the stator and let me rotate my rotor in this direction in this direction which type of induced voltages will be there in the stator let us see okay see here my currents currents are the currents in the sense flux whenever you have current automatically flux should come so my currents are going to be cross here my currents are dot here so currents will enter here current will come out here okay currents will enter here currents will come out here so flux will be in this direction okay flux is in this direction means that means that this is going to be n pole this is going to be s pole okay because see here uh, my flux is in this direction in this direction means that you have to sit in the air gap okay so if you sit in the air gap if you sit in the air gap flux is coming cross here dot here cross here dot here so cross here dot here flux has to come out in this direction sit in the air gap sit in the air gap flux is coming out of the rotor flux is coming out of the rotor so this should be n pole okay now let us try to apply right hand Fleming's right hand rule always if you sit in the air gap if you sit in the air gap flux is going in this direction okay so flux is in this direction in the air gap flux is in this direction keep the what is it four finger like this and after that direction of rotation is in this direction now field is rotating in this direction means that with respect to field conductor is rotating in downward direction so flux is in this direction and the motion of the conductor is in this direction so my middle finger is going to be induced voltage so induced voltages are going to be dot here cross here okay so n pole flux is coming out sit in the air gap if you sit in the air gap like you know flux is coming out of the north pole so flux in this direction in the air gap and my field is rotating in upward means that with respect to field conductor is rotating in downward so my induced voltage should be in this direction okay so induced voltage here is dot means that here should be cross okay let me take one more last example let me keep that field in the stator okay so stator rotor okay let me keep field in the stator okay these are currents okay so these are currents the moment like you know in rotating machine if current is there flux will come that side if current is there flux has to come now current is cross here dot here so current is cross entering here coming out dot here current is entering here coming out dot here so flux should be in this direction okay so this flux is set up by the stator actually many guys will be confused here focus here there please now if i let me sit in the air gap let me sit in the air gap okay now my currents are entering here coming out like this so flux is in this direction flux is in this direction so flux should be in this direction you are sitting in the air gap so flux is coming out of the stator flux is coming out of the stator so it should be n pole okay so this is n pole created because of stator s pole created because of stator okay means uh, most of the guys will be confused here focus here there again cross here dot here okay currents currents like you know cross here dot here flux is in this direction so flux should be in this direction here air gap is there this is stator this is air gap this is rotor this is air gap you are sitting here flux is coming out here like this means that if you sit and see the stator flux is coming out towards you so this should be n pole okay and now means flux is going in because because of stator currents flux is coming flux is coming out of stator n pole flux is going into the stator if you sit in the air gap flux is going inside so it should be s yes, pole now let me have my conductor here and here let me rotate the conductor in this direction let me rotate my conductor in this direction now which type of voltages will be induced okay so flux is in this direction in the air gap 
So four fingers should be in this direction. And here conductor is rotating or field is rotating. Conductor is only rotating, field is on the stator. So conductor is rotating in upward direction. In upward direction, conductor, motion of the conductor. So field, motion of the conductor. So my middle finger should be induced voltage. Induced voltage here is cross and induced voltage here is dot. These are induced voltages. Okay. Now, immediately I will solve a gate problem such that you will understand the importance of this. Actually, in gate, very small, small things also can get 2 2 marks. After that, I will tell you how to what they say calculate the direction of torque without using left hand or right hand. Okay. After that, let me combine everything induced voltage and torque direction combinedly and let me produce, like you know, motor and generators. This is one of the voltage gate question. As I told you, if at all if questions come from very basic, they will give at least for two marks. Okay, they has given for two marks. Let us see. Two magnetic poles revolves around a stationary armature. So this is going to be stationary armature, and poles are rotating upon stationary armature, carrying two coils C C1 dash C2 C2 dash. As shown in figure, consider the instant when the poles are in a position A as shown, identify the correct statement regarding the polarity of the induced voltage at this instant in coil sides C1 and C2. You may think of like, you know, this is stationary upon stationary how poles will rotate. Okay. This is related to rotating magnetic field. In rotating magnetic field, poles virtually rotate. Okay. So let it rotate anyway. This is going to be stationary. Now, upon this, it is they are rotating, poles are rotating. Now, this is N pole, this is stationary. Okay, so from N to S, flux is there. From N to S, flux is there, flux direction is like this. And poles are rotating in this direction, means that my conductor should rotate in opposite direction with respect to field. Okay, so conductor is in opposite direction. Now, C1 is going to get dot. C1 is going to get dot. So, here I am going to get dot induced voltage. And here I'm going to get cross induced voltage. Okay. Here flux is maximum, so maximum induced voltage will be there. Now when the poles are here, flux density here is going to be zero. So C2 and C2 dash there will not be any induced voltage. Okay. Whenever, like you know, induced voltage in a conductor directly proportional to flux density because induced voltage in a conductor equal to BLV. Okay, directly proportional to flux density. Flux density is maximum at the pole center. So, induced voltage will be maximum. Induced voltage here and here will be zero. So, answer will be A. Dot in C1. Yes, dot in C1. C1. No EMF in C2. Problem solved. Okay.